Okay, let's call the meeting to order. It is 11.05, March the 10th. Uh, everyone has a copy of our agenda. If you do not have one, there are some over here and some behind me. Okay, at this time, I would like to get an approval or disapproval of the agenda presented and amended. So can I get a motion for the agenda to be approved or disapproved? Approved. Motion to approve. I need a first. Sylvia, a second. Second. Juanita. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. Okay, the ayes have it. So we will move forward. At this time, um, just to let you know that you are allowed to speak and make a comment in regards to the agenda. You will be given approximately three minutes per speaker so that we can move. Speak up. You can't, you can't hear me? Okay, okay well, you're gonna be given three minutes to speak. And uh, that way, the meeting proceeds in a timely fashion and the time that we have to use this room. Does everybody understand that? Okay. So at this time, I would like to offer uh, any public comments in regards to the agenda. Anyone have a comment? Mm. No? No, okay. it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay. So uh, the next part is section four of the agenda. And that would be the discussion of the notice from Sierra View Hospital Legal Counsel. Does everyone have a copy of that? Yeah. Okay. Would you like me to give you a few minutes so that you can read it and review it in case you have a question? Does anyone need a copy and I can bring them on? So I was, yes, for the lack of just because mm -hmm. when we're talking about public comments, we're talking about public comments to all of this or just, yes, it could be all of this that's on the agenda. Okay. Public comment is open for anybody in the public who wants to talk about anything on the agenda or not on the agenda. The board doesn't take up whatever the public says, it's just time that the public is on the board. Okay, you're going to get an opportunity to make a comment in just a minute once okay. everybody has been given a chance to read it. Yes, there's a resolve volunteer who wants to become the involved. I can take your comment and it it can be. But how are we going to know the result? If it's all, we'll know what you're planning on doing. First of all, Pat, I need you to state your name. Oh, my name. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and your address or your phone number 
Okay. And you make your comment. It was a question. Okay. Is that still going to be a comment? So are you, are you wanting to dissolve volunteers and in their place you will be doing the hospital adult volunteer? And I have a question too. Is this is she commenting under public comment right now? Yes. Is it under yes. She is she is commenting under public comment in regards to the Okay. We're we're going. To, so I think Pat, you'll have an opportunity to make comments and ask questions about that agenda item once they get to it. But you're already no, 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 no. We're going to discuss it right now. We're okay. giving everybody a chance Just to a chance to look at it. Okay. Has everybody read it? Some of you board members preceded it ahead of time, so you might have already read it. Okay, so at this time, now your question. Well, so if you were, if you make a comment from the public, if you say the questions are the things you work from that time. Right, it's right. Okay if they were discuss what they're supposed to do. Yeah. So you, you make a comment, we take it, note it, it's recorded, and then we go on to, okay. Did you want to restate it or? No. If you want to keep it as stated. <laughs> no? You're going to be discussing it later, I understand. Thank you. Okay. So now we've come to the discussion of the notice. Um, does anyone here have a comment? Sylvia, you were having a question? I think just based on what we're, we're here is this, to me, I've read it and I understand, but I think for the purpose of recording, um, it just, I would like to hear an extrapolation more of what we're talking, what what's on here as her question alluded and we're all looking like we've got a question mark on our faces. You know, what does this mean? Exactly. You know, does that mean we're to take our pink smocks off and, and, and be done and put on a different color in a different direction? Well, so or does that mean the hospital doesn't want us anymore? No, not at all. What, what we need to look at in the letter is stating that the Volunteer League in the manner that it was created back in 1963, um, they needed a nonprofit organization in order to have people able to volunteer in the hospital. And it had to be a 501C. So there we have the Volunteer League is created to give those people an opportunity to volunteer in a hospital setting, but it was due to the labor loss, okay? Over time, time has changed. So now those laws have changed. And now in order to volunteer in a hospital setting, you no longer need to be a nonprofit organization. Um, when the Volunteer League was formed, they did nonprofit and they also did fundraising. Well, later on in 1992, I believe it is, um, they created the foundation. Now the foundation's sole purpose is to fundraise. Now, when we look back at the history of the Volunteer League, when they started in 1963, you can see in the paper clippings that they did galas, they did all sorts of things like that, and that stopped. So once the foundation came into play, so now their purpose here is to um, fundraise. So in a sense, our Volunteer League now, what is what the letter is addressing is the fact that we can volunteer. It's not taken away what we actually decided to do when we came. I know that when I first came to CRV, my whole intent was to volunteer. This letter is stating, I still have the opportunity to volunteer, but in I have to embrace the change of, now I'm gonna be called an adult volunteer. 
but I'm still able to volunteer. You're still able to volunteer. There's gonna be new avenues that are gonna be created, which I don't know at this time how, but the hospital is indicating that they still need us. Um, they still need the, the gift shop, you know, that, that's still gonna be a fundraising entity. And that's where I volunteer. And you need to understand that when I volunteer in the gift shop, it's just not a gift shop to me. Um, employees come in and they buy candy because they need that pepping up, you know, and I'm able to help them get that. Um, they come in because they want to give a employee a gift. It's their birthday, a surprise them. Or an employee is feeling under the weather, so they want to buy a card. So we provide a service, but it makes you feel good that you're able to do that. Not only that, but you have uh, patients that come in, um, visitors that come in, that come in to buy a gift for somebody that just had a baby. And we offer that service. And it, it makes me feel good that we're able to do that. And it's all done under the basis of volunteering. And that's not being taken away. It's not, the letter is not indicating that we cannot volunteer anymore. What it's saying is that we want to create a new avenue. The way the league was structured back in 1963 is no longer necessary. We still can have volunteers now, but we don't have to worry that you're a nonprofit organization. You can come to volunteer now. And the foundation was created to do fundraising. So the volunteer league is not needed to do the fundraising. And we actually don't do that much fundraising other than the gift shop and then um, a book sale, which we haven't done, and um, gift baskets and things of that nature. But um, fundraising can still be done but by the foundation. So, so uh, uh, if you wanted to get information from your members, like the book here, the process of the page, Yes, it would be nice if they, if they have questions. And so to answer your question, Sylvia, absolutely, we want you guys here. We don't plan to get rid of volunteers. We plan to grow the volunteer program. However, we don't feel that we need the vehicle of the league to do that. We don't need a board to do that. Um, However, that's that's up to the board and the members of the league if they want to continue to have the league and 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 conform with what's being asked of them in that letter. However, either way, however the however the board and the members decide to vote, the hospital is is still going to have a volunteer program, and all of you are going to have an opportunity to continue volunteering if that's what you want to do. There'll be a process that you have to go through, just like you did when you were volunteered when you became a volunteer, um, but there'll probably be, it'll look a little different and there, there will definitely be more opportunities in different areas if, if that's something that you're interested in. Um, so no, we're not trying to get rid of volunteers. We want volunteers, we want you guys all here. It's just the way that it's the way that it's set up now is just not operation functional for the organization at this time. So will there still be uh... Membership fees, like we pay for. No, no. Well, that's up to that's up to the lead. That's up, so today, what they're here to do is. So the lead can decide. Mm -hmm, the lead can decide. Well, so if the lead, if the lead decides, um, based on what we're not at that we're not at that item yet, um, but Iris can explain that to when we get to that item, um, that's on the agenda. But to, just to, to stick to this to the letter and what the hospital's plans are. We are planning on keeping the gift shop running. However, it will not be operated by the volunteers. It will be operated by the hospital. That doesn't mean there won't be volunteers in there. Um, and that money will be given through the to the foundation so that the foundation can continue using that money for scholarships. So yeah, you're saying the gift shop eventually will be closed and stable. Yes. It wouldn't be like well, we're still in the process of trying to put everything together. Um, we hope by the end of April to have certain um, structures put together so that you know, like where your option, where your options will be, and where you can volunteer. But we do plan on having volunteers in the gift shop at this time. We do. It, it will look different. Yeah, it will look a little different. An opportunity. So the bottom line is <laughs> you're going to have volunteers, but they will not be provided by the league. Absolutely. There'll be individuals, as I understand it, 
You won't be just sitting at the med desk. They may need you to stuff envelopes for a certain department. And if you would like to do that, you can volunteer to do that. There are other opportunities as opposed to sitting at the desk, getting a phone call, you'll actually be going someplace and doing something for them. It's not all of us. So if you wanted to go to the gift shop and the opportunity is going to be there, you can do it. It just won't be somebody sitting at a desk and getting a call. It'll, it'll look a little different, um, but I think the gist of all of this and to Sylvia's point, regardless of whether or not the league decides to dissolve or not, we are only gonna have adult volunteers on site as of May 1st. All of you are welcome to, to come and talk to HR if you wanna continue volunteering and we'll, sit, we'll see where you fit in. So piggybacking on that, whether we, let's just say we stay a league, the hospital will have no use for this league. As it is. As it, as it is right now. Correct, because you wouldn't be able to fundraise for us and you wouldn't be able to volunteer under the league that you put under the adult volunteer program. We have all the volunteer officers. No, it's, it's under the hospital. There won't be, there won't be officers Not in this. The I mean, we're the ones that are, you know, we'll make sure that uh, we'll, we'll create, make sure that all of the onboarding and those types of things, your compliance and stuff gets done. But really you'll be working direct. There will be, we don't know exactly how it's gonna look or who you will report up to, but there will be one person that will help with scheduling, um, you know, find your spots for you where you wanna be. Um, and then you really you'll be working if you're in a department that the leader will be the one who will oversee you. And just by, by the second week of April, we should have a lot more um, structure provided. So if you are interested in continuing to volunteer, then I would encourage you to reach out to Brooke um, by the second week of April and there'll be more of the, what the structure and what the opportunity will look like. But what we're saying today is that there will be an opportunity. It will look different, but the need and um, the need for volunteers is still a need for the hospital and we still welcome volunteers. The structure of it will just be different. And the question about dues, no, we won't have dues. We won't have to have meetings anymore. You won't be told you have to volunteer twice a month. I mean, those are some of the positives that people don't want to get involved on the board or anything like that. All they want to do is come to volunteer. And that's what we want. We want you guys that's to come and enjoy what you came to do for your community. You won't be wearing your pink and white or yes. black and white. You'll be wearing your own clothes. Well, or, or a uniform. You'll be, or a you'll uniform be in, a, in a designated out, like yeah. give you a shirt or something. That's well, all the just, just my two cents to that, and you correct me if I'm wrong, ladies. Personally, I take pride in wearing that pink smart. I really do because I, that shows me off that I am a volunteer. And by that, I don't mean I have to have a pink smart. I, right. I would like... Well, we want you to stand out. We want people to know that you're all. the volunteer. So We're even talking about maybe even yeah. having a little badge study. There, there will be some type of uniform. Yes, that. because that yeah. way it, it, it tells the hospital staff, hey, I, they can call on me at, if I'm walking by, hey, can you do this or the other? And they are not going to be apprehensive that I might be the cleaning lady or something else. There will be something that I don't know. For sure. You're still going to be wearing that uniform in whatever capacity and still be proud and still carry it. It's just that the color changes. That's it. So will we still have the identification? And the you'll still have yeah, identification. Yeah. It's colors. Yeah, you still have identification that states you're a volunteer. You still have to get around the hospital. So that doesn't change. That doesn't change. Okay. And like I said, the hospital does need the volunteers and they want us. We just have to embrace the change and go in a different direction. That's all. And you won't have a board that you have to that has to be done. It's you won't have general done. meetings to have to attend. I mean, there's a lot of those things that people don't want to do. All they want to do is volunteer. This has given us an opportunity to do so. And you could do it other places. You know, not just what we're doing now. 
you can expand and learn more something, you know, somebody else that maybe you've wanted to help or you've seen they possibly needed help, but you couldn't do it. It might make it more You'll exciting. It now. More exciting. You get a new opportunity to go in a different area. So. <laughs> this was a surprise. The whole thing. We were stunned. We had what? What is that? <laughs> so uh, I'm I'm still confused. I I won't be used to it until I get some more information. But this was a total surprise. And we were going, what? Well and what I think it was a total surprise to everybody, but but from an organization standpoint, it was something that we built needed to happen. This was our decision because we still want to we still want to utilize our volunteers. We still want you here. We need you here. But as you will see, many organizations across the state have done this many years ago, back all the way back to two thousand and four when the legislation changed, they no longer have those league members. They have volunteer programs, but they don't have a league. They only allow their foundation to fundraise. We at Delta does that, Adventist does that. All the hospitals surrounding hospitals are here. Okay, I have a question. With that in mind, and we have money, does it automatically go to the foundation? And if so, can we earmark that for what we would want Wait a minute, to wait a minute. How would it be absorbed from the hospital if being that the league was the one that raised it? Mm -hmm. But you'd have to give it to a nonprofit type of thing, I think. Well, the first- That's where I would- first, just, um, before, we, before we moved to that area- Thank you. Yeah, before we moved to that area, we first have to address if we want to go ahead and move forward with- um, Approving or disapproving uh, the dissolved to dissolve the league as it is at this time, um, because that way we can move forward to the next step, which would be having to sign papers and doing all that to dissolve the league, so we can move forward in that respect. But what happens if people vote it down and we don't want to? Well, you're, you're on your own. And I don't know where you're going to volunteer because the hospital is saying the meeting is out of nowhere. <laughs> it won't. In other words, the hospital won't house us. Be that no. Case. no, the hospital is going to say, "Go, yeah. you got somewhere else." <laughs> but they don't want you to do that. They want you to stay. They want you to just go into the adult program if you like. Well, well not, you're still going to be Pat for the not have an agency. There's not going to be a lead. Right. And that's the only thing. That's like the only difference. Change of color. We become part color. of the hospital structure. You still got that look on her face. What? So you still will be Bobby Paul, a volunteer at the Sierra View Medical Center. That does not change. You just won't wear pink. Iris. Do you know this my favorite color? <laughs> yes, Juanita. Can I switch to another subject or the brown act or do I have to wait? Uh, we have to, that has to be on the agenda and we have to stay to what's on. Well, that, that was part of the notice. That was part of the notice. Right. Yeah. yeah. Anything that's in the meeting. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Okay. How did we violate brown act? That is my question. Not, not that I'm against this album, but. I want to know what we did wrong. Right. I've been here 20 years and I I thought everything was just dandy. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Alex, do you want to? Sure. Okay. Uh, I'm the bad guy. I sent the letter. That's <laughs> it. Um, yeah. And so, just some background um, because the league was formed initially by Sierra View uh, and Sierra View by laws is still uh, in, to some degree has control. Uh, it is subject to the Brown Act, and there's a, a government code section that I'm signing into. If anyone cares, 5492C1A. Um, and basically, it just says that you have to follow certain rules. And the rules, the main rules of the Brown Act are you can only, quorum of the members can only talk to each other um, at notice meetings. So if there's a group of the board that's, you know, six or more of you, that talk about anything that has to do with the league, you have a violation. Um, and you have to post your agendas, 
ahead of time. Um, the laws changed in 2017 where you now have to post them electronically as well as in front of the door. Um, so that those are, are some simple, uh, simple violations that are occurring. The, the big takeaway is that any official action that's taken at a meeting that doesn't comply is deemed invalid. And that gets to be a real big problem when you have fundraising money. That so you're five hundred one c three that you're designating scholarships. If you're at a meeting that isn't properly noticed, um, then essentially the board is giving away money without authority to do so. If you're thinking you're doing everything fine, but if you're not following rules, that could be an issue. Uh, and the other issue is if there's infighting or somebody wants to cause problems, it becomes something that they can sue on. And there's a right to recover attorney's fees. And so for the hospital, that, that's you know always what I'm thinking. If somebody wants to cause trouble, there's a clear violation, and they get their attorney's fees for causing everybody. And so uh, that's that's really all we're here to, to correct is to say either you know follow the Brown Act to make sure that nobody can undo what's been done and nobody can cause problems. And they also can't meet someplace else either, even in a social setting. Correct. And the biggest problem we have is what are called serial meetings, where one person will talk to two people, and then we'll talk to another two people, and then we'll talk to another two people. And that's and the same topic each time. Well, now they've created a brown act violation. And each of the two groups of two people don't know that it's been violated because they don't know what that other one person's been doing. And so you could innocently, you know, could, the first two people didn't violate the act. They, they, talk to the third person and thought everything was fine. And then only later to find out that that person was talks to two different people or the two others. And, you know, the initial ones, they're offending people, but they didn't ever meant to be. And so it, it's just those kinds of things where you got to be careful. Uh, and with this big of a board it, and the nature of your guys' volunteer work uh, puts you in a lot of places where problems could arise. So, so we can mess up without meaning to mess up another yes. word. Yeah. Yes. And that, yes, that's but that, that's still just another reason. It doesn't take away the fact that we've messed up. Exactly. And as long as everybody's on the same page and nobody brings a suit and nobody's complaining, you know, you can have these mess ups and the real world consequences aren't felt. But as soon as it only takes one, right? One person to decide to, to blow it up and it creates a whole bunch of problems. So that is, that is our concern, and that is, and I'd also like to, to point out that it, the original articles of organization have not been located. They're not actually filed with the Secretary of State. Um, they're, they're what's kept, and that's what, how the entity is formed. Um, the league could, could disconnect itself from the hospital and the board for the hospital that is elected the governing board votes to say that there's no authority at all or power it just has been delegated to the league and the league were to vote that they are not connected to the hospital you can then have that you can sever that connection and then you want to be subject to the ground act but as it stands right now how the bylaws are structured and how the everything is set up it, it looks like you're subject to the Brown Act. And so, um, I mean, I didn't put that in the letter or the notice because if you're going to dissolve, it's going to completely move the point. Um, but it, it would be a, a step that would have to happen. Or you follow the Brown Act like we're doing. And, uh, you know, the, the recordings are just, again, uh, it's for protection. It's so that if somebody says that the rules were followed, then you go back and you can say, oh, no, we got the recording of the fault. Flash flood is smart. Can you also speak to the question of what can happen with it? Yeah. So the, the it's all the person. It's everybody's, yeah. Flooding. So as, as far as uh, winding down to be a nonprofit, if the majority, so today, the the league uh, will take up whether or not they're going to vote to have an election to dissolve. You can't, the board can't just dissolve a, a nonprofit. You'd have to get a vote of the majority of, of the members of the league. Uh, and so today, we just, if they, you guys did vote to have this election, and then if the election, 
you know, a majority of the members did decide to wind down, um, then there's a process that's followed. Um, essentially, the board would have to decide where the money would go, which nonprofit. It has to be a 501c3, and it has to be in the same type of area as the volunteer league. Can they earmark it for something that maybe they want to do when they give it to them? So, or can they spend it? It is a donation. You, so you could you could donate it or spend it, or if you wanted to give it over to the foundation, for example, for scholarships. Um, you are like any like if if I personally wanted to donate money to the foundation, I could put ties on that money, and the league would have the power to do that too. So we could say we want it for scholarships, we want it for wheelchairs, even though you're getting it to earmark it. For what we would like to right and, and, and yeah, the, the, the foundation got that. Um, you know, you make it too too complicated, and maybe the foundation or whatever other entity won't want to accept that donation because there's too many strings attached. Yeah. But if or it's perhaps. simple, like a, a scholarship or wheelchairs or those kinds of things, then you're, you're probably why wouldn't you? Okay. So we could actually spend some of it prior to to donate like wheelchairs to the hospital prior to dispensing the balance of it. To the nonprofit, which would be the foundation, if we wanted to gift it. As long as it is in compliance with what your bylaws say that the money is supposed to be used for. So, I mean, you, you wouldn't want to do something out of the ordinary, but yeah. if you did the same old process that you always did. Uh, um, then, but you've done that. Yeah, because right. you've, yeah. you've done employee education before, you've, you've done other supplies for the hospital. Before. Right. So, so, as long as we stay within that, then we're okay. Right. And then if there's money left over, you have to disperse it. Um, the attorney, you need a letter from the attorney general uh, that verifies that your final gift is uh, appropriate. So what we do is let's say that, that there's 20,000, I know there's what, 70,000 there. Let's say there's 20,000 left over that you're giving to the foundation at the end. Uh, before you actually you write up the proposal, the foundation would say that it accepted. You then have to bundle that all together, send it up to the California Attorney General's office, and they have to send a letter back that says we approve uh, this final donation of the funds. Mm -hmm. And then you file with the Secretary of State that letter along with your wind-up documents, so that, that way uh, nobody can claim that the money walked off. Mm -hmm. okay. well, is there something easier to cut to the chase? Let's say they decide whatever it is towards the hospital before we dissolve, would that impede the fact that it has to go letter to letter to letter and back? No, it's going to have to happen no matter what. Regardless, it has you're to You're going to have your final tax return. You're going to have to prove to the city of California that, you know, you know their biggest concern is a private individual gets it, and then now they've got money tax-free and they didn't pay their taxes on it. And so they're going to make you prove that that money stayed with the final ones. <laughs> you know how they are. <laughs> The government of California gets its money. What is the date that they answered? Yes. It is. Okay. Does anyone else have a question? No? Does Brenda? Okay. Just something to verify. If they decide to not be anymore. It will go out to the board to all the members for them to go when they want to dissolve it or not. So if you if we say yes, dissolve it, you're not dissolving it right then. You have to go to the members down to vote. We have to have a majority of the vote as the volunteer members. Yes. Okay. Now that would be the active members. Right. Yeah. So today what we would do is either make a motion to go forward and dissolve it. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, if we do do that, then we have to set a time and a date and have an election and go through that process. And all of this needs to hop on it because like so we have been said, we're we regardless of how quick or how slow we do it, as a 5-1, we're out. Regardless of how we decide or what we decide based on this conversation, the league is out of the hospital, period, mm -hmm. by May 1st. So the sooner we deal with it, the better it will be. And we can- Now we need some time as far as wrapping everything up so that we could be done by May 1st. Oh, I think you guys need to get back to the agenda. Was that? Yes. First. If we continue, 
everybody says yes, we want to. Are we going to get a list of the bylaws that <coughs> control us? We will no longer have any bylaws really? in the new program. Okay. You won't have that any longer. You won't have a group. You won't have you won't have those rules. So we are not you have to follow the by specific laws by the hospital. Yeah, by well, the hospitals. Have, you world. just have to follow the hospital. Hospital yeah. so we which we do now. Vice president. Uh, sure, sure. You know what the hospital laws are. Rules are. Yes. Yeah. Sure. It's every basically day. really what you do now. You continue to do what you do now. Every year we'll have annual orientations. This whole thing is it's because we have roles under the volunteer league. But I that have no idea what happened to like this. It's it's it. Well, some of the, as Alex explained, that some of the rules in the Brown Act were not being followed. So. And, and one other thing that is, uh, sorry on that. Just, uh, another piece for the hospital that's important is that if you have public money coming in for a donation through the gift shop, the volunteer league has to pay for uh, the annual tax return. You're subject uh, ostensibly to audits but occasionally. I don't know if any audits have ever been done with the money to make sure that it's not money that's locked off. And uh, if you have more than twenty-five thousand dollars, the cost of that tax return uh, is thousand dollars annually. Um, I don't know what your guys' tax return has been costing, but there's a certain amount of, of administrative costs where if it's all under one fundraising organization, then you only have one tax return, one administrative expense. Um, you, you're, you're a donation of even a thousand dollars a year extra is, is good money for the hospital. It's good money for people. You don't want to waste it on uh, overlapping administrative uh, things that you don't have to. And as stated in the letter, it's it really, we're just trying to simplify processes for everyone, for you guys. So you don't have to have this league to where you have to follow all these rules when all you really want to do is come and volunteer. That's why it's like that. Okay. So we'll move on to number five, election on the dissolution of the Sierra View. Volunteer League. Um, I'd like to get a motion to approve or disapprove a motion to hold an election for the members to vote and dissolve and direct the board to prepare a certificate of election to wind up and dissolve. I motion that we hold an election of the members to vote and dissolve and direct the board to prepare a certificate of election to wind up and dissolve. Okay, Chris. Can I get a first? That was the first. That was the first. second. Second. Juanita, second. Okay, can I get a raise of hands, all those board members that approved to move forward, please? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So it has been approved to move forward to dissolve and have an election. Okay, election procedures number six on the second page of the agenda. If and only if the board votes to hold an election, which we have of the members to wind up the volunteer league, then the board shall discuss and vote on the following matters. The date and time of the election. Um, our next board meeting is on the 20th of March. We need to decide when we'd like to hold that. And then we also need to decide on how the election will be conducted. This will include, but not limited to the use of mail-in ballots to form ballots that are delivered and the process for delivery and the ballots of members. So we need to decide on how we want to handle this. 
I would add to that, you know, because it says mail-in ballots. Those are all our options that we can do. We ultimately make the decision as to how it's going to be handled, but these are options that can be included and are not limited to. Well, how about so, a phone call if we don't, I, again, I'm just going by the time crunch to getting this moved on. Well, we, we, making phone calls be out of the question. Well, I think we need to select a date and a time of the election, first of all. We just need to make sure so, that it's, a, it's fair. So we need to give everyone enough time. So we can do this on March the 20th at the next board meeting. Um, and then we would have to send out notices to everybody and get the ballot. Or we can have our board meeting, I believe if I'm not incorrect, on the 20th. And at that time, since we decided on a date, then move forward and decide how we're going to conduct it. Is it going to be by coming in to vote? Is it going to be by mailing in the vote ahead of time? We can't make that decision today. Yeah, yeah, let's make it today. Mm -hmm. That's what that's okay. what the agenda item. All right. So the date and time of election. Someone have a suggestion on the date? Can we push that back one week just so that a lot of this gets uh, they, uh, Well, the following week, instead of March 20th, push it back one more week. Let that simmer. Because this this is not that I'm against I'm, of what's going on, mm -hmm. but it just feels like kicking the teeth. And I, and I don't mean that in a bad way, because this is this league has gone on for ever. And I'm just new to the place. Okay, today. Uh, but just something today, to kind of, you know, get today. used to the idea. Today is the 10. Um, next month, which wouldn't be next Monday, and the following week is the 20th. Then we have the 27th. It's through the 27th. 28th, and that's a Monday. Are you saying do a vote on the 27th? Yeah. Okay. Because all of, all of this is like, <clears throat> yes, no. So, so is she making a formal motion that we'll be elected on March 27th? Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so a motion has been made to hold the election on the 27th of March. What time do you suggest in your motion? Um, 11 o'clock is fine. 11 o'clock. So we have a motion, and now I need a second. And we've got so it's a personal vote. It's not a mail-in or phone call. They're just deciding on what day. We're just we're home. just deciding right now as to what day. Instead, okay. so we, and what I'm saying is, instead of the twentieth, push it back one more week, so that we can hold the elections, so that all of this can simmer on people's minds and opinions, yes. and be educated as to what's going on, instead of being reactive as we are right now. It's like, oh, what's going on? Okay, so we have a first, and I need a second. I'll second. Carolyn, second. Okay, so all those in favor say aye. Aye. Um, all those that are opposed say no. Okay, the ayes have it. Now the next part is part B, how the election will be conducted. Yes. So, if I can make your explanation, we can hold it in person and we can think the, the, the majority of the members will actually attend the election. Mm -hmm. uh, that is always the fastest and easiest way because you, if you do phone calls, I don't think that, that you can verify that it's a person that was actually calling in. If you do mail in, um, I, I mean, I guess if it was signed by the individuals who know that it's coming in, that would work. Um, but given that it's only two weeks out, we don't want somebody's ballot being lost in the mail. We would want to come in after the fact, all those kinds of deadlines. Since it's just two weeks from now, if you had it in person, probably would be best. So we could send all our volunteers a letter in the mail telling them at this time we are inviting them to come and vote for the. Okay. Mm. Okay. 
And we've got an extra balance there, so if somebody didn't bring theirs, so they didn't get it. Well, you could commit and say, I'm going to Okay. So I'd like to make a motion that we have it done in person and that we mail them a letter along with a sound uh, ballot that they can bring on March 27th at 11 a.m. So I need a second. Juanita, second. Okay. Sorry. Where will we meet? Oh, you know, uh, we'll see. If we can book one of our well, rooms. We'll book one of, the, one of the conference rooms, and we'll post it on the letter. Okay. Can I see something out of turn? I mean, well, out of. Any motion, okay. Let me take the motion. Go for it. We did already. You all on the oh. Internet. In, in person. Yes. Yes. Can I have a hands so that I can see one, two, four, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. There. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. Just as a as a side note, just as a side note, when we're talking about all the, the funds and all of that good stuff, is there and just as an idea just popped in my head and I know I talk too much. Um as it currently stands, is there any way, like our president or one of these people, and to come to the to a foundation meeting and and learn what the foundation needs are, and then she can come back and say, "This is what I've learned from the foundation. These are the possibilities that we have to donate." So, so it is, it is it's not on um, the agenda. But to clarify what you guys previously are voting on, it's just to have an election to. Have the members direct the board to go through the wind up process. And that yeah. isn't just like it's like if they vote to get rid of it, it's not just like gone. You, you as a board will still need to have meetings. You'll still need, you can have a subcommittee that goes to the foundation or figures out what other nonprofits. You decide where your money wants to go, but you only do that if the members vote to dissolve it. But the vote to dissolve means they are voting to have you guys figure out the best way for the league to take care of how the money comes in. So. Will you continue to direct us and not just could let us bumble over stuff? I uh, mean, judging by our history. Uh, yeah, and keep in mind that I am the attorney for the hospital, which puts me as adverse to the league. It makes its own separate entity. Uh, so I can tell you guys how I think the hospital wants you guys to do it, or you guys can get your own attorney to direct you through the process. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I would happily tell you what's best for oh, government nice. board's interests. That would work. Okay. <laughs> so the next is part seven. Announcements, the regular monthly meeting will be held on Monday, March the 20th. And I'm going to need a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. I got a so so second. second. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so our next meeting, our board meeting will be March the 20th. And the meeting has been adjourned and the first is um the word is the twelve day I'm coming. What's the difference between those two? Uh, I'm sorry, we're in a board meeting.